Hello, my friends. I'm Frankie, and welcome to Club Foodie. Who doesn't like bread, especially when it's freshly baked? It comes out from the oven, nice and warm. Mmm, yummy. I love making my own bread, and surprisingly, it's not that hard. In the past, one of the recipes I shared was a nice, delicious Jewish bread called Hara. Now, here's its French cousin. <laughs> In today's episode, I'll show you how to make my brioche bread. This is another incredible one. Made with lots of butter, this is perfect to serve along a meal, for sandwiches, or even French toast in the morning. It can also be formed into buns for your burgers. So my friends, let's get cooking. In a bowl of a stand mixer, we'll add dry yeast, 2% warm milk. You can use whole milk, but as long as you don't use 1% or skim. And honey, yeast loves sweet. We'll stir well and allow the yeast to activate about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, in a large bowl, we'll add three cups of flour and keep three quarter cup on the side. Then ground sea salt. We'll whisk it very well and set aside. In another bowl, we'll add our soft butter and lots of it with powdered sugar. If you want to save some money, Make it from scratch by clicking on the top right corner of your screen. We'll mix these two together until evenly combined. If your butter is still a little too hard like mine, simply put the bowl in the microwave for a few seconds to soften it, but make sure to not overdo it as we want some texture from it. Here we go, nicely blended. Let's go back to the yeast. As we can see, it's alive. So we'll add three large beaten eggs and some pure vanilla extract. Using the dough hook attachment, we'll process on medium speed until fairly mixed. Next, we'll add our three cups of flour mixture and process on low speed for a couple minutes. Then we'll add a third of the butter mixture Increase the speed to 3 and continue mixing until nicely combined before adding another third, scraping the sides of the bowl. When the butter is all in, this is when we start using the reserved 3 quarter cup of flour by adding a tablespoon at a time until the dough clings around the hook. Then we'll increase the speed to 4 and knead for 6 minutes. When time is up, we'll transfer it onto a work surface. I'm telling you, it will be quite sticky. Now, with our floured hands, we'll form a ball by pulling it under. We'll place the dough in a large bowl lightly, and I'm not kidding, lightly greased with oil. I'm using grapeseed. And we'll cover with a clean kitchen towel. Before transferring, to a draft-free area, just like an oven, with the temperature off. We'll let it rise for one and a half hours, or until it doubles in size. See? Perfect! This is exactly what we're looking for. We'll punch the dough to deflate it, and once again, with our floured hands, we'll form a ball by pulling it under. We'll return it to the bowl, cover, and this time, we'll transfer it to the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. The next day, we'll flour our work surface very well. The dough will be hard, and it's okay, because if we want to make buns for burgers, braid it, or for multiple rolls, it's the best way to weigh it. You remember how soft it was yesterday? Hmm? So, I decided to make eight balls with it, instead of braiding it. And also, it's not really the season for burgers in the middle of January. 
Well, not up here in British Columbia. After forming the balls, then placing them in a buttered, floured loaf pan, we'll cover again and let it proof for two hours or until it doubles in size. Now, do what I say, don't do what I did, because I forgot about my balls <laughs> and let them rise longer. <laughs> They're huge. All right, now we'll make an egg wash using a yolk with a little bit of milk and whisk very well. We'll brush it evenly, making sure to get all the little nooks and crannies. Next, we'll transfer it to a 350 degree preheated oven and bake for 20 minutes at first because halfway through baking, we'll rotate the pan. We'll return it for 10 to 15 minutes or until the top is nice and brown. We'll let it cool off in the pan for 5 minutes before carefully flipping the loaf and let it cool off completely on a wire rack. And my friends, this is our humongous brioche bread. <laughs> Despite the fact of its size, the taste is absolutely amazing. With a nice buttery flavor, this is the perfect bread to serve with your meal. It's a little time consuming, but you'll be very happy with the results. I hope you give it a try soon and be sure to visit cloudfoodie.com for ingredient amounts, directions, and more info. Until next time, my friends, bon appétit.